Hello everyone, I'm Natalie and I'm back with another YouTube video after a long hiatus. I did become a mother about a year ago, so that along with my PhD studies have been keeping me pretty busy. I do have an upload coming soon, which was recorded from a talk I did about the evolution of the female orgasm. Once I get that recorded, uh, that recording, I will upload it for you all. Uh, that was a live talk done in celebration of Darwin Day and Valentine's Day. And it's a nice long one. And today, I just wanted to make a video that I've been planning for a long time, but I tend to overthink and overplan things, so I thought instead of trying to be perfectly comprehensive and perfectly accurate, I would just um, share some thoughts on this topic from some notes that I've made a little while ago. And I'm even here in my office today, so maybe that makes me look even a little bit more um, academically trustworthy or something. Okay, so my topic today is this issue about sex. Is it binary or is it a spectrum? I'm not the only one that's talked about this. And I find there's a lot of confusion, whether it's in scientific literature or just out in the popular media. And people seem to think that if we describe sex as a spectrum, that somehow makes us, um, or should make us more tolerant of people who um, present in sexually ambiguous ways. I don't think that's necessary. I think it just confuses what we know to be factual. And this topic is a great one that shows how useful an evolutionary framework can be to understanding um, human nature and reality. So, to state it clearly, sex is not a spectrum. Um, sex is binary. I'm talking about humans and mammals um, and other animals, that's true too, but we'll keep that focused today. So, sex is binary in that we need a female and a male to reproduce to continue our species. And from there, we understand that sex is a functional category, and its function is reproduction in an evolutionary context. So I think what is happening here is people are confusing phenotypes or observable characteristics that are usually associated with one sex or the other with the functional category of sex. So a working definition that I've borrowed from a friend for sex might be you know, um, the, the developmental trajectory toward developing eggs for females or sperm for males. And this is a great definition because it means even if a person is infertile, you know, if they have sperm or eggs that didn't develop properly and they can't reproduce, that doesn't mean that they are not male or female. So it doesn't have to be functioning correctly to retain its status as a functional category. And um, in my earlier days of school, it was always that sex was biological and binary, and gender involved all of these um, social and cultural connotations. And I think that is a useful way of understanding these concepts. So um, something I saw that really increased the confusion, I don't remember exactly where it is, I think it was a blog on nature that argues that the binary model of sex is too simplistic because there's all of these disorders of sexual development. And then there's a paper from a while ago by Anne Fausto Sterling who said, um, you know, there's this really high rate, like one to two percent or maybe even more of um, disorders of sexual development or ambiguous or intersex conditions. And that paper was problematic because she included conditions that people don't um, generally consider as intersex, such as Turner syndrome, which is um, having one X chromosome instead of two. And no one's really arguing that Turner syn syndrome women aren't female. And the other issue of this, so when we say a disorder of sexual development or intersex, this would be you know, someone that has developed that it does not clearly fit in the male or female category. The thing is, those kind of disorders emerge because processes that are involved in sexual development um, fail in some way. So we know there's masculinization and 
um, feminization processes going on in utero, and when these processes don't unfold as they typically do, you get disorders of sexual development. So we can say those disorders actually emerge because of the sexual binary. So that's not a reason to create a new category or to argue that sex is a spectrum. I'm finding it strange that lots of biological and medical articles are exchanging the word gender for sex or using both of them. Um, it makes a lot more sense to use sex as a binary signifier and to use that when we're talking about male or female. And then we can use gender to describe other aspects of being. And the other um, point I mentioned is that people seem to mix up um, phenotypes and characteristics with sex. So an obvious one of this would be, you know, if people act stereotypically more feminine or masculine, um, does that mean that they're less male or female? No. So phenotypes or characteristics might be things like, say, amount of body hair. Typically, males have more body hair than females. But if a female has more body hair, that doesn't mean she's not female. It means that she's a female manifesting some male-like characteristics. Uh, some of these points are more obvious, but some of the area of confusion I've seen especially um, is around this idea of microchimerism. So um, what we often see people argue who come from a more biological perspective is that um, your chromosomes determine your sex, which determine your gonads, which is you know, sim simply or generally true. But of course, uh, genetics are complicated and people can manifest all different kinds of um, genetic components. Well, not all kinds, because some mean you won't survive. But there was this one case I saw a screen cap of floating around social media where there was a woman who got pregnant and she had some cells with Y chromosomes present in her gonads, or lo lots of Y chromosomes in her gonads. But obviously she had functioning eggs because she got pregnant, married an offspring. So by our functional definition, she is female. And we can you know, describe that presence of Y chromosome as a characteristic, as a phenotype, even though it's technically a genotype, but that doesn't change her sex. And of course that may be um, a rather abnormal or rare exception. We don't really know. Um, so we shouldn't be using um, characteristics that are usually associated with one sex or the other um, to mm -hmm. say that person is one sex or the other. Okay, so think about that uh, reproductive function definition that I'm working with. Um, I think those are the big points I wanted to make. So now, if you see people using these terms interchangeably, or if you kind of see this argument that sex is not binary, I hope this video will uh, give you another point of view to consider. And have a great day. Thanks for watching.